good morning all today we are going to see about the uh, parlance so parlance is one of the most important supporting structure which will be transferring your uh, loads from the roof sheets to your trusses so today we are going to deal with what are the possible loads coming on the how to calculate the loads and how to distribute the loads to your uh, today we shall uh, that concept yeah. so before that yes. so this is a arrangement of a truss skeleton just it is it has been shown uh, two uh, truss panels right so here we are having one truss and at the spacing of yes we are having another truss so this is truss one and truss two okay. so this truss over the uh, truss we are having the furlens of i sections here you can see the small furlens of i sections so these i section furlens are going to support your roof sheets if and only if you are having only two trusses your furlens alone are sufficient to take care of your roof coverings if you are having too many truss or if you are having a long span the spacing spacing between your trusses is too long by the time you need the support of your rafters and all in the first picture we have seen right rafters so if you are spacing between the trusses less your purlin alone can support your roof sheets if not if the spacing between the two truss truss 1 and 2 is long means by the time we need the support of your rafters to support your purlins so first mainly we are going to deal with the purlins okay. so this yes is the spacing and what is this p this p between p is the spacing between the purlins yes is the spacing between the truss and p is the spacing between your purlins so how to calculate the load coming on to your purlin so your possible loads we have already discussed your dead load live load and wind load so the dead load we have to calculate how much area is contributing to your purlin how much area of roof sheet is contributing to your purlin so if a roof sheet is placed over a purlin it will may maximum it will be of rectangular shape so you have to locate in such a way that it should uh, form a spacing of s by 2 s by 2 on either side so along the center of your yeah, yeah. this is yes and this is p so how to calculate the area distribution of your uh, roof covering p into yes so in this picture you can see so this is the entire form of truss how to form or how to arrange the truss we can see in the upcoming picture so this is one truss that is truss 1 supported by a column it can be of tube sections or angular sections this is truss 2 and these trusses two trusses are being connected by the purlins at the edge nodes at at the apex and also at the span so this is how we are connecting your two trusses using your purlins and one more truss we are placing the over uh, back to truss 2 Trust three. So again, we can connect by means of purlins. So the main location of purlins is at the edge and at the apex. We must have a uh, purlin. And if this uh, slope, if the slope is long, by the time we need to introduce a new purlin over here. So if a purlin is being introduced, your load, the load will be transferring to through this node. So we can have a one more member here. initially we'll be having a bottom cord and these two top cords so if the span is long if the sloping edge is also long we have to introduce a new purlin since a new purlin is has been introduced we need to have a diagonal member over here this is what i explained yesterday based on the load conditions we can arrange our own truss okay. so if the span is still long or if your roof covering may be more weight by the time you can introduce one more purlin over here 
So if a new pollen is introduced, again you need to introduce a new member in the truss. So that is based on the design criteria for a particular type of uh, building. So this is a plan view of your truss. We have seen three trusses, right? Truss one, truss two, and truss three. This is these are your furlins in a plan view. And P is the spacing between your furlins. So these are the nodal points which will be transferring your sheet covering to your Purling and then to your uh, trusses. So, how much area of load is being contributed at this point? We need to calculate. So, what are the possible loads we need to calculate first? Your dead load, live load, and your uh, wind load. Right. So, this is your middle panel. Right. At the junction, two trusses. So, these are your middle panels. This much area is going to contribute on this truss point. Okay. So, this point. We will be having the load from this end and also this end. You can see. So the total panel area can be calculated as S is the uh, length of your panel and P is the width of your panel. You have to note down. And in the plan view, you can see the same panel S and P. So this is how this is the load distribution area of a one panel. So this much area is going to this is not a panel. This much area of is going to con, uh, contribute to the uh, truss on the purlin. So we are uh, here to calculate the loads on your purlin. So lo the load contribution area we are calculating. So S is the length and P is the so your dead loads and live loads. So your dead load comes from your roof sheets and the self weight. So the roof sheet, it can be of galvanized ion sheet or aluminum foil sheet. So this, uh, the dead weight has to be uh, noted down and we have to apply in that UDL form. So this UDL form, uniformly distributed uh, load on the panel, this load will be contributing. Like this. So, we are calculating just one single panel. Okay. Like this, it is going to contribute. So, this total entire UDL load has to be converted to a single point concentrated load at this point. Right. Since it is a middle panel, we can calculate this edges and area we have covered. And over that area, we are going to calculate the load. So, this dead load is nothing but your uh, sheet load. So this entire UDL has to be converted and it to be applied as a single point load at this node. So how to calculate that point load? This W into S into P. W is the UDL area. So if it is a GI sheet, we need to note on that 18 kilo Newton per meter square. 18 Newton per meter square. That is the self weight of that uh, GI sheet. S is the spacing, right? And P is the width. The spacing of your purlin and spacing of your truss. If you are multiplying this, you can get the concentrated load to be applied at this point. So, dead load means you have to uh, include the dead load, that just the self weight of your GI sheet. And yes, and so this is how you are converting your UDL area into a point load. And the live load. So the live load for services, uh, men will be uh, climbing over the truss and they will be doing that uh, maintenance work. And also your uh, electrical plumbing sheets and all plumbing work, electrical work. Uh, repairing. The live load also as a UDL area. So for uh, trust building maximum we will be calculating as a 2.
into ma'am Ma'am, you are not audible. Ma'am. Are you audible? हेलो यस मैम वी कैन हियर दिस मैम फ्रॉम दिस स्लाइड ओनली आई वाज नॉट ऑडिबल or previous slide hello from this one this one only okay so this is the live load the live load for a process men will not be in under maintenance all phase so a minimum live live load of 1.5 to 2 km per meter square can be taken here that is the maximum live, live load and So the uniformly distributed live load can be converted to a single point load by multiplying the uh, considered area. I think that your uh, spacing of your truss and spacing of your parallel. Okay. So now we have converted uh, point uniform distributed load into a point load. For dead load, we have calculated and live load we have calculated. Okay. So this is for the middle panel, right? So far we have considered as a middle panel. now what happened to the end panel or the edge panel so this edge panel we need to calculate how much area is contributing as a point load here so here we can uh, consider from this pic you can see that contributing area is very less and it is half compared to the middle panel so only half of the area we need to calculate the spacing between the truss is same but the spacing between the parallel is half right because the other area has been taken already for the uh, load distribution of the second purlin edge purlin we are calculating now so this area can be neglected we have already included for the calculation so only for the edge purlin we need to calculate so even though we are having too many purlin so here we are having just five purlin in your real building you may have too many uh, building uh, purlin by the time you any uh, this middle panel purlin and the edge panel purlin is alone sufficient to take care for the design configuration because the same will be repeating for the other purlin so only for the edge panel you have to calculate so that you can consider this this end purlin and this this end purlin and the middle panel purlin whatever the design comes this is same for all the other purlin lies between the middle panel So the end panel, the area of contribution is S into half the spacing of your purlin that is C by two. So in 3D view, we can see how much uh, how the UDL is getting distributed over the end panel. That is now we need to uh, uh, convert this UDL into a point load. So for That is W into S into here. We need to know that it is C by two. I think I was. Yes. This is C by two because half of the purlin spacing has been considered here because it is the N panel. So this next is your wind load. Till this we have calculated UDL and UDL has been converted to a nodal load dead load and uh, live load we have calculated next is your wind load so here your wind load is, will be acting at an angle to your panel so this angle will be same as your truss panel that theta 
though your wing may be horizontal but your panel is in the inclined fashion so again the same panel you can calculate for your wind load right so this is how you have to calculate your wind load your wind will be maybe horizontal due to the inclination of the truss wind uh, the point load can be in means of ww ww is your wind intensity right calculated p right that wind intensity into spacing of purling into p by cos theta because it is making an angle theta with your uh, purling so that load has been converted into uh, horizontal and vertical load we can resolve so here we have to convert as a vertical load that is p by cos theta w into spacing into p by cos theta so this is for the middle panel here i have mentioned the end panel sorry for that middle panel so dead load live load wind load so for the dead load we are considering as a uh, the w into s into p has been considered for the middle panel for the edge panel we are calculating as p by 2 and for the wind load we are calculating as p by cos theta the w and s are same, right so all the three loads have been calculated then we have to uh, one panel we uh, one only one panel of calculation is sufficient so that you can replicate for the other panels also so this is how your entire roof sheeting is going to sheet over your truss and your load is getting distributed so the entire roof sheet how is going to contribute as a udl here you can see over the per leg entire udl so after, after that the entire udl has been converted as for only one panel we have calculated right so that one panel you are applying at this point and at the edge panel you are applying at this point and same the, this can be uh, taken as a middle panel this can be considered as a middle panel so the edge panel and middle panel you have you have to consider as a concentrated load and we have to apply at the nodal points or the junctions of your trusses so all the nodes intermediate nodes you have to apply as a concentrated load so this is how you have to convert your uniform load into concentrated load yes. so here your dead load has to calculate as your load intensity in the area of the panel area of the panel how to calculate your load right s into c so this load includes your dead weight includes your roof covering bracing and self weight and also the mep loads and fall filling if there is any fall filling that all also be to included into your dead load so the roof covering for ga sheet is 85 newton per meter square and ac sheet your unit weight is 130 newton per meter so this are the unit weight right so this unit weight as the only the contributes on the self weight of your sheet so in addition to that the roof covering has to be fitted to your purling for that we need j bolts your connectors are required and laps or have has to be done on the roof covering so including the self weight your roof coverings and your connectors and your j bolts what are the connections bolts connections including all that your the entire gi roof covering will be contributing a load of 100 to 150 newton per meter square of load and your ac sheet aluminum sheet will be uh, uh, contributing a load of 170 to 200 newton per meter square so where we have to add your fall ceiling your roof covering will be on the top of your purlin your fall ceiling will be suspending from your lower panel in your truss it will be in the lower panel this is your lower panel so this lower panel only your uh, fall ceiling will be fitted on that you have to uh, consider your uh, fall ceiling load and live load the live load it has to be calculated like 20 plus 6.6 l so l is your span of your truss and s is the spacing of your truss for calculating live load you are having two formulas that is 20 plus 6.6 l and 10 into l by 3 plus 5 into s by 
so mostly i'll be taking the second formula because it is uh, having the uh, facing of truss component so it will be more reliable than this 20 plus 6.6 so formulas shall be used uh, but for including the face of truss on the effect of live load we will be using the second formula l by 3 plus 5 into s by uh from exam point of view your uh, i think wind load you will be expecting a wind load uh, formula wind load sorry yes wind load problem and your uh, design of purlins you may expect in the exam point of view so for that i have taken on uh, problem right So here your total expected truss self weight, right? So your sum of dead loads. Dead loads I have calculated from the AC uh, roof sheet, your uh, MVP load, and also from your uh, joints and the connector, right? So, so in that example, they have taken 40 kg per meter square, and live load they have taken as 60 kg per meter square, and the slope angle is considered as 30 degrees. and your self weight of truss how to calculate that the slope angle ha has to be included right the self weight of truss into unit weight so how to calculate the self weight of truss the unit weight of steel has to be included and the area of truss that is the self weight of the truss and the total dead load you have to include the roof covering your purlin and also the uh, truss self weight the 12.2 has also to be included and then you have to calculate your wind pressure and leeward pressure so what is this wind pressure and leeward pressure in the first session we have discussed how to calculate your wind load so this t is equal to 0.6 into v z square so this v z is the combination of k1 k2 k3 and vb so vb is the basic wind speed for chennai we can take it as 50 and k1 is the probability factor which is based on the life cycle of your life span of your building so mostly we will be considering 50 years so k1 it may be maximum it will be 1 and k2 that is based on the terrain category and the height of the structure and size factor your a and b alone so it also will be 1 and k3 is the topography factor whether it is on the hilly area or a very plain area so by multiplying all these factors you will be getting b z when this b z is multiplied by this uh, 0.6 into b z square you will get p z so the speed that also we need to include in your calculation that is your windward pressure and windward uh, sorry wind pressure on the leeward side and the windward side so here this is your wind direction so this is windward pressure what is the pressure on the outer side that is suction pressure that is called as leeward side so the opposite side of wind this is called as leeward side this is your windward side and this is your leeward side so how to calculate the Uh, panel wind load so this is your windward pressure so if your p z is 1250 this external pressure coefficient has to be calculated from your uh, code book so external pressure coefficient that is cpe and cpi we are calculating right so this is the total wind load cf into ae into p z and your external pressure coefficient that is cpe and internal pressure coefficient cpi so both the things we need to take from your code book so this cpi and cpe is fully based on the dimension of your building your length of your building your width of your building and the height of your building so so your leeward side pressure coefficient will be 0.7 and your windward pressure coefficient will be 0.9 and 0.3 this is for the building what i have considered so in your problem if you are given with the dimension of your building for your respective dimension we need to calculate the cpi and cpe that is available in your code book from the table you can note down okay. so this uh, the dead load we have calculated uh, which means your panel dead load w into p into s in the previous slide we have seen so w is the weight of your truss and p is the spacing of your 
Perlin and yes is the spacing of your dress. Right. And panel live load. So live load you have considered as 60. 2.5 is your panel uh, spacing between your Perlin and yes is the spacing between your uh, dresses. Why this 9.81? Because your load the 60 and 52 are in terms of kg. So that convert 2 into you are having 9.81. That 2 kg are dividing it by 1000. Dead load, live load, wind load, be converted, and you need to keep same limit. Right? So the wind load, which will be acting perpendicular to the inclined roof, in the previous slide we have discussed, it will be uh, making an angle theta with your truss. So we need to multiply your load by p by cos theta. Inclined panel length, your W windward force into p by cos theta. We need to multiply. So W we have calculated as 875 and P by cos theta. So that is 2.5 by cos the inclined slope, slope is 30 degree into 5.5. That is the spacing of your press. And for leeward side, leeward side means this end. Windward side is this is the area of uh, wind pressure and leeward side is this is the area of wind pressure. So here the area we need to, uh, the pressure we need to include and 2.5 by cos theta divided by 1000. So this leeward side means the wind opposite direction. Here you will be expecting a suction pressure. Right? Suction pressure means it will tend to pull your uh, wind upward direction. And here we are having two coefficients at the uh, windward side. So one is on the wall and another one is on the roof. So we are having two pi feet. So now we have calculated all the loads. Now that load has to be converted. Uh, already we are having, right? Your wind load in terms of kilonewton. Your dead load is also in terms of kilonewton. So your UDL, all the UDL load has been converted as a point load over here. Dead load is 7 kilonewton and your live load is 8 kilonewton. Your wind load is also converted on the windward side it is minus 17 and on the leeward side it is minus 13. So in uh, industry we won't, uh, but for your uh, problematic uh, uh, subject, I mean analytical subject, you will be calculating exact assets. But in industry we may round off. Not to 14, even to 15 we will round off. Here if it is 17 means even to 20 kilonewton we will be taking as a rough. Because to take care of your accidental load, we may round off to the nearest number. But for your analytical subject, we need to uh, uh, employ the same values what you are getting here. Right? So this W uh, and this load has to be calculated and convert applied to your parallel. Now we have applied as a unit load. Now the load that are required to design your parallel are all calculated. Now we need to design your parallel. As of now, we did the load calculation. Now we are concentrating on the design of Perlin. So this Perlin, you can expect your uh, moment, right? That is M U and M V. So why it is it's nothing but your W L square by ten, right? W L square by the ten. Since your Perlins are considered as a continuous uh, Perlin, if you are going for a simply supported Perlin, if you are considering simply supported, then we need to consider it. it's a UDL. It will be W L square by eight. So here it is W L by ten. So here, why we need to calculate this M, U, and M, V? Always we'll be concentrating on M, X, M, Y, right? But why here M, U, and M, V? Because your furlins are inclined fashion, right? So whenever your axes are uh, inclined, by the time you'll be expecting a biaxial moment, right? So what is a biaxial moment? Here I can show. So initially, when a member is in a normal position, either it is in a horizontal or in a vertical, your moment will be acting along in the x and y direction. So we are using uh, I sections, channel sections, and angle sections are all for this furlens. Right? By the time your furlens are inclined also, because your roof uh, upper cord is inclined, your furlens is also in the inclined fashion. That's why we are calculating the wind load, you are dividing by cos theta. Similarly, your number is also subjected to biaxial bending. So here is a normal uh, uh, 
normal structure or a normal element in its own position right here mx and my mx means your moment acting with respect to x along x axis with respect to x your mx will be acting and my will be acting in this direction it means in the direction of y along y axis so only we are considering as mx and my so this is your neutral axis in the normal position and your member is inclined like this right uh, here the it is forming a ea which means if your neutral axis is forming uh, it's not if your member is somewhat inclined with respect to one axis means by the time you will be having only one moment that is mx uniaxial bending or if it is inclined with the vertical axis y means by the time you can have a uh, uniaxial moment in the y direction it will be parallel to x so it is it may be inclined in the y so may you get uniaxial bending over here but in case of purlin it is inclined it is making an angle with respect to both x and also y so by the time you will be expecting moments along both the directions that is u uh, mx and my so your neutral axis is making already it is making an angle with x and y so the new axis will be u and v so only you are calculating mu and mv so with respect to both x and y direction it is having a moment so it is called as biaxial moment if it is with respect to any one axis it is called as uniaxial bending and if it is bending with respect to both the axis then it is called as biaxial bending so imagine your purlin is uh, maybe a hollow tube or an i section so it may be inclined fashion it may be placed so the neutral axis will be forming an angle with the uh position so that has to be taken into account so mx and my for i sections you might have come across this m i u u and i v v right so with that we are calculating this mx and m v m u and m v so for biaxial bending why we need to calculate that's the concept here so p is your gravity load your snow load your weight of purlin self weight of purlin everything we can calculate so h plus p cos theta and h does is a load acting along your u u axis including your wind load so this everything is includes your wind load also p sin theta so whenever a uh, force is acting in a inclined fashion it can be resolved into two components horizontal and vertical so your wind load you are uh, resolving into p cos theta and p sin theta okay and l is the span of your purlin and center to center distance between your uh, adjacent trusses so your m u u can be calculated this is the formula just for p dash you are replacing with h plus p cos theta actual formula is p dash l by 10 for p dash you are employing h plus p cos theta and for h dash you are using p sin theta into l p sin theta l is already in the formula right so even you are using channel sections or i sections you need to check your after the design you need to check your uh, limiting condition that is your mu by du mu by mdu plus mv by mdv is less than or equal to 1 so the design bending moment about u u axis and the design bending moment about v v axis the same v u and mv so this ratio when multiply uh, when adding you have to get 1.0 this is the last design check this is common for both channel sections and i section the i think this uh, design of purlin's uh, uh, in channel and i sections or in your syllabus so for both the sections we are having the uh, same ratio so the biaxial bending we have to use that uh, uh, plastic model z p z is equal to m z gamma m by f y and m y gamma m o by f y into 2.5 into d by d f your d is the depth of your section either it can be a channel section or it can be i section d f is the width of your section and m y moment about y axis and z axis gamma is your partial safety factor right and f y is your yield stress of your material so this is how you have to calculate your 
plastic section modulus these are the prerequisites <coughs> before to design your purlin so this is uh, here comes your channel uh, eye section purlins and for channels the same design procedure Uh, just listen. I will share the PPT with uh, Ruby, ma'am, so that you can note down later. If you are noting down, you will be in a hurry. Okay, ma'am. So the spacing of purlins, take it as a center to center distance process because that is the span of right. And the gravity loads P and W we can calculate. And your maximum bending of M is that and M U U. So yeah, you have uh, given with your load. So the load has to be converted as a moment. That is load into distance. You can convert as a maximum bending moment and shear force. Here, in your uh, since you are having the uh, design methodology, you need to calculate this W M and S F and all. In industry, while you are modeling with the stat pro, this bending moment and shear force diagram you can import from. That your stat pro itself shows your bending moment and shear force. But why do we need to have a knowledge over here? Because only if you know the what is the uh, value of your bending moment and shear force is coming, and how the orientation of your bending moment, how to draw that bending moment. Even if your uh, software is doing a mistake, you can able to identify it. So for that knowledge, whether your software is working properly or uh, properly or not, because uh, all any software, all the software is a garbage in and garbage out. Whatever you are giving, it will show some result. Something it has to show, so it will show a result. But whether the input is properly processed by the software or not, whether it is taking uh, the loads or in a proper fashion or not, that one we need to know. For that, we need to have a manual calculation. We should be strong in your. Uh, Uh, manual methodology. So uh, your bending moment and shear force has to be calculated for your factored load. So the load factors we have discussed for your dead load and live load 1.5 times, and uh, for wind load you'll be calculating 1.2 times in the first day class we have discussed. So based on that we have to take a proper factor load out of which which load combination is giving you a maximum effect. Worst effect, worst case of your load combination has to be taken. And that bending moment and that shear force has to be taken for your uh, calculation. Right. So here this is uh, ZP, this plastic section modulus. This is common for both I sections and also for your uh, channel section. So M Y M is we have calculated. The partial safety factor considered is one point one. So if you are considering the channel section, you need to. If you are having this ISMC or ISMB or your channel C section, you need to take the corresponding width and depth from your steel table. Okay. So for this, you can check your uh, steel table, and you can initially uh, for manual and also for the software basic uh, size we have to give. We don't know the real uh, size as per your design. So, but for the uh, Main shape you have to give a preliminary section. You have to give it may be a smaller section, ISMB 100 or ISMB 200 like that. Work it out, and if you are if your section is failing again, you have to redesign it. That is the basic criteria. In your concrete also, you will be following the same I think. Right? Here also you have to assume the minimum dimension of your I section or your panel section. Work it out, and if it is not passing the limit, then again you have to. If it is unsafe. Then again, you have to redesign it. So for checking its adequacy, we need to choose the minimum fit. Then here you have to choose the corresponding section. Your SZP is here, right? So based on the section modulus, you can choose your section from your IS A control. So for shear capacity along your Z and Y axis, you can use your formula W D uh, sorry V D Y is equal to F Y by uh, root three gamma M O and A V Y. So here your shear has to be calculated. This A V is it is nothing but your D into T W. T is your thickness of your web and D is the height of the section. So if you are choosing a section from I S 800, then you can able to from that section what is the particular height, particular what is the particular thickness and uh, breadth you can choose this from that table itself. From this you can calculate your A V is it and Once you are employing in this equation, you can find your shear capacity of your 
chosen section in y and z direction right so this shear capacity we can calculate and also the moment we need to calculate using the equation z p z f y by gamma m o this has to be less than or equal to 1.2 times of z e z f y by gamma m So here Z B and Z E. So Z D is your section molars and Z B is D Y. Here you need to the so right. This is common for both channel and also for I section. M Y by D M D Y M Z by M D Z. You need to check this local capacity. If this ratio while you are adding up, it is less than. Or equal to one. If it is not, again we need to redesign it. And also, if it is passing this, if it is less than or equal to one, it is passing. Then you need to check your deflection criteria. So deflection table also it has been shown in your first day session for your lateral member and for your vertical member. How is the uh, deflection? So for the vertical member, you will be getting the lateral deflection, and for the horizontal member, you will be ha having the downward deflection. So for it is a like a horizontal member, so downward deflection we need to calculate because your Berlin is a horizontally inclined member. So your vertical deflection will be L by 180. So L is the span whether your length of your your span is sat satisfying this deflection or not. We need to calculate. Once this check is also passed, then you can very well use the chosen section from your table. If any of these two criteria is not satisfied, then again you need to check your design, redesign. Right? So under the center distance, calculate your load, calculate your bending moment and shear force, find your ZP that is section modulus, and using that section modulus that is plastic section modulus here you can see right ZP is plastic section modulus. Using this, you can choose your section from IS eight hundred or two thousand seven, and you can calculate VD and VZ shear capacity, and compute your design capacity in this MD and MY MDY, and check your local capacity using this equation, and finally check your deflection length. So this is your design uh, of your parlance. So if your section is having an angular section, if you are choosing an angle section for your plane, when you are going for I and channel, if your load is heavy, you can go for I section and channel section. If you are having very lighter load, don't want to employ that much bigger section in your design. By the way, you can go for your I section. Uh, sorry, angle section. The load calculation, everything remains same, right? All the things remain same. Even your bending moment also, WL square by 10, right? Everything is same. Here. The formula to calculate your ZB alone differs. So M by 1.33 into 0.66 into F5. So here, here we need to arrive your trial uh, section by assuming your span is your depth of your section is 1 by 45 of your span and your width is 1 by 60th of your span. So here we need to keep an eye on your deflection criteria also. Your depth and width should not be less than your specified. Uh, Deflection criteria. So from this ZP, you can choose your suitable section. Again, we need to calculate your uh, section. Yeah. So again, one more formula from IIT has been uh, given so for Z plane of your industrial building. So spacing of truss, wind speed, your grade of steel, or everything is given here. We can just have a look over here. So your steel grade is FP four and ten, four one zero. Ma'am, can you please to, uh, wait for two minutes, ma'am? Connection is a uh, problem. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am.
Ma'am can start now. Okay. So here we can uh, go with an example. We can have uh, eye section shall be designed for a Berlin at Kolkata. You can consider the slope of traverse 30 and center to center distance is 5 meter and the spacing is 2 meter for AC 4 and 0 still has to be used. So here we can uh, write down the data and your wind pressure since it is that 30 degree here you need to convert your uh, dead load into that uh, inclined load the 340 into 530 and how to calculate the dead load you have to assume your uh, dead load of your purlin and we need to include the galvanized ion sheet so that uh, contributing your dead load and your dead load has to be converted to your to take care of that inclination it is multiplied by sine 30 and cos 30 that is h and p right and your wind pressure p is it into 0.6 degrees of square since here they are not uh, uh, just only your uh, area is mentioned right so simply you can take it as 0.6 into v z square if not if they are having speaking about the terrain category uh, and all we need to include your k1 k2 k3 and also your cpi and cpe and all here directly they have given the pressure uh, only that area alone mentioned so that the basic wind speed 50 can be used for the pressure calculation so p is equal to 0.6 v z square so your wind load assumed here is 1500 into 2 into 1 that is uh, your area of your panel the total purlin uh, load whatever the load coming on your purlin is the 3000 this wind load and also this dead load acting on your normal direction normal to your roof and the factored load it is again 1.5 which is uh, factored load in the normal direction that is vertical direction and your horizontal direction it is 1.5 into this 170 it's only 170 this alone so which means whenever you are taking wind load you have to calculate your 0 degree and 90 degree right 0 and 90 degree you have to consider okay. so in the design procedure we have seen this pl by 10 and hl by 10 so l is the spacing P we know and all the keep in mind that all the units are all the parameters are under same unit kilonewton and meter or not so m u u and m v v is same as your m z and m y because we are contributing on your biaxial moment so we can try with your uh, planned uh, width of b s is 75 mm and depth is 125 mm this is assumed that is basically assumed section so the plastic model is of your uh, section can be calculated using this formula m is at into gamma m o yeah gamma is your partial safety factor which is 1.1 and d and b are the depth and width we have assumed so once you have calculated you will be arriving this that p is equal to in terms of mm cube right so we need to choose a section which is satisfying that p is it which means above a section should have the plastic more or less above the 66 into 10.3 uh, 10 power 3 we need to choose right not less than this not less than this because this much plastic uh, uh, more or less is required for your section if you are choosing section having lesser than this plastic more or less you may uh, your section may fail so choose a section which is having uh, plastic more or less above this so if it is very minimum, it is not at all in your table means choose the minimum section as ISLB 150, right? This is the minimum uh, section available. So it is having a ZTZ of 1 or 4.5 into 10 power 3. So very well you can use this, right? Almost nearly double of your plastic model. And for this ISLB 150, what is the cross-sectional area? What is the depth, the width, and your thickness of your flange and web? Everything we can note down from your uh, steel table. Right, your I is it, I Y, I Z E is it, and Z E Y. All the things you can uh, you can note down from your scale table. So the section classification that is Epsilon of 250 by F Y one. So which means your uh, B by T F is 9.4, D by T W is less than A to four. So 
here since this epsilon is equal to 1 here your section can be considered as a plastic one right? so here we need to check your bending strength mdz and mdy both we need to calculate here your md we can calculate this is 23.75 and md is it also we need to calculate we need this this d is it is your design moment in your z direction this md is your actual moment coming for your load so your design moment should be always greater than your actual moment so this is your actual moment this is based on the section you have chosen for your uh, design so the section should satisfy the moment so your md is a design moment should be greater than your uh, actual moment hence it is okay your section is fine similarly we need to check for your md y also so md y also we need to cross check with your md design moment if it is greater than your design moment hence it is okay then you need to check uh the design for your overall uh, member thing that is for your local capacity so mz by mb is it plus my by mb is less than or equal to 1 or not so if it is less than here we are getting 0.66 if it is less than 1 then it is fine you can very well go with your section is mc to 150 again one more criteria is your deflection check so there is l by 180 l is the 5000 is the span and uh, 180 If you are getting this twenty-seven point seven eight mm, okay. whether it is okay or not, we need to check with your W L P O four by three eighty four E A. Right, W L P O five by three eighty four E A. We need to check. So it is or the section deflection is four mm for your assumed section. Right, but your allowable deflection is twenty-seven mm. For twenty-seven mm, your Uh, section is allowed to deflect, but for your section, you are getting only four mm, very much less lesser uh, deflection. Since it is lesser than your allowable deflection, your sec uh, whatever the section you are suggested is okay to withstand your load. Okay, right? that is what the design said here. So first, we have to uh, design the load, calculate your moment, and find your ZP. From your ZP, choose your section, note down the section detail. And find your MD is it MD Y. Compare your design moment and the actual moment. Check your local capacity, and check your deflection. So your design moment should be less than allowable moment in X direction and Y direction. Your local capacity should be less than one, and your deflection should also be less than allowable deflection. That is L by 180. Right. So this is your design of column. Uh, that's all for your. Uh, today's session